so um, if everybody could take a seat, I think we'll, we'll get started now. I know this is an incredibly busy time, and I know it is for me, and I know it is for all of you. So thank you for being here to spend a few unhurried moments with us, uh, with your friends and colleagues, as we bid farewell to two long-serving members and very highly valued members of the Washington College faculty. This year we honor Rosemary Ford, the Alonzo G. and Virginia De Decker Professor in Natural Sciences, and Kathy Wagner, a member of the English Department and former Associate Director and Co-Founder of the Rose O'Neill Literary House. It is with deep gratitude that we acknowledge the significant contributions these two women have made in the arts and the sciences over the past three decades. Rosemary, you set the standard for engaged, hands-on learning in your molecular, molecular excuse me, biology labs years ago. And Kathy, you were part of the pioneering team of literati that built our reputation as a writing school. In the bustle of our daily lives, it's sometimes easy to forget our history and the people who forged our future. So today we pause and remember, we pay tribute to a young biology professor who made sure the John Toll Center had a greenhouse and who worked to create our campus arboretum. We celebrate the young poet who brought Pulitzer Prize winners and Nobel laureates to campus to inspire our young student writers and we express our humble thanks to their present day selves for their selfless dedication to teaching and mentoring our students over these many years. So on behalf of the entire college community, I thank you for all you have done for Washington College. I wish you both great health and happiness in your retirement. And now it is my sad duty to inform everyone that Patrice DeQuenzio is unfortunately caught in traffic, but we have Andrea Lang who is a, a very good uh, fill-in for her who will be reading the citations. Andrea, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, obviously, Patrice sends her regrets to Kathy and to Rosemary. Um, she was uh, at a meeting on the other side of the bridge. There's been an accident, and I guess they rerouted all the traffic on 50. So thank you for uh, letting me um, read these wonderful citations to um, two colleagues who I've really valued over the past several years working with them. So I'm going to start with Rosemary. Rosemary Ford was into native plants even before we believe environmental sustainability went mainstream. <laughs> Though she was instrumental in creating the Virginia Gent Decker Arboretum on campus, uh, for Rosemary, the most captivating things about plants happened at the molecular level. By examining their DNA sequences, she can uncover, unlike others of us, the secrets of how plants have evolved and adapted. Over the course of your 30-year career at Washington Colleges, the geneticist has shared these secrets with her students while teaching them critical biological techniques that have well prepared them for graduate study, medical schools, nursing schools, and research positions. She was instrumental in securing a grant from the National Science Foundation to purchase a, a high-speed ultracentrifuge, a powerful piece of equipment critical to cellular and molecular study. Her lab-based approach to teaching molecular biology presented at the Association of Biology Laboratory Education meeting and at workshops sponsored by the National Science Foundation has become a model for biology professors across the country to emulate. Her lab experiments and her scholarly investigations of plant genetics have been recognized and featured in such publications as the American Biology Teacher. Rosemary uh, was a department chair from 2000 to 2005, acting chair during fall 2009, and named the Alonzo G. and Virginia Gent Decker Professor in Natural Science in November 2000. In addition to serving as an academic advisor to our first year students, biology majors, and residents of West Hall, we might add, Professor Ford has provided invaluable guidance to students navigating the dual degree nursing program. In this role, she keeps up with the constantly changing prerequisites and works with several students each year as they undergo the application process. She is equally committed to students outside the classroom, and since 2000, she's been the advisor for a group called Best Buddies, which I've uh, seen students really be excited about being involved with. It's a charitable group that creates opportunities for those with developmental and intellectual disabilities to then work with our students, and it was under her leadership that the Washington College chapter of Best Buddies was recognized at the organization's leadership conference in 2005. 
So, in recognition of your significant contributions to advancing our institutional mission and for her lasting influence on this generation of young scientists, Washington College extends our deepest gratitude and is pleased to present to Rosemary Ford the rank of Associate Professor of Biology Emerita. Thank you. And, and now I'm going to ask Professor uh, Mindy Reynolds to come up and say a few words about Rosemary. Please forget about me. No, I don't want to. No, no, no. Now the truth comes. Now the truth comes. Exactly. So Rosemary Ford maintains a quiet but impactful presence across campus. Um, as was just told to us, she holds the Alonzo G. and Virginia Gantt Decker Professor of Natural Science, and she's the director of the Virginia Gantt director, um, Decker Arboretum. The beautiful trees we see across campus were tagged by Rosemary and her helper Winston. And it's because of those identifications that we know and appreciate the Southern Magnolia outside of Toll, the Chinese chestnut tree outside of the library, as well as the various willow oaks around campus. Rosemary's love of plants extends well beyond the Arboretum. She implemented a plant biology class in the Department of Biology, and in the fall she sends out bloom alerts to all of her students. She has them walking around campus talking about the various types of vegetation, and outside of her office each week she exhibits various types of plants, which she's more than happy to share her excitement. And it's from her expertise that I'm comfortable um, admitting here that I've been misclassifying several um, things such as cucumbers and tomatoes as yep. vegetables when in fact they're fruits. And no doubt Rosemary's always pleased to tell me when I'm wrong. <laughs> and she also reminds me that I should have been one of those ones who took her plant biology course. <laughs> Rosemary's truly dedicated to her love of nature and has written both a book chapter and a case study on poison ivy entitled A Rash Decision in Taking the Itch Out of the Bite. In order to complete these items, she threw herself wholeheartedly into the research because there were countless times when she came to work covered in poison ivy. Clearly, her science is based off thorough and empirical research as well as trial and error. In January, Rosemary went to Nicaragua and has since embarked on a new project of putting together an identification atlas of native Nicaraguan plants. I hope that retirement will afford her the time to pursue this passion and also continue to learn her Spanish so she can purchase her favorite Nicaraguan cookies without assistance. <laughs> Rosemary's been teaching within the biology department for 31 years, and through those years, she has significantly shaped the department, mentored students and faculty, and advised students in the 3-2 nursing program. Rosemary is never one to sugarcoat her words, and in doing so, she holds those around her to very high but achievable standards, and always lobbies what's best for the students, the department, and the institution. In speaking with several alums, they've commented that Rosemary has helped them find their natural strengths, enabled them to become independent and confident, while at times also showing them tough love. Rosemary's humor and laugh are like no other. Her laugh can be heard throughout the halls in any building she's teaching in. And on several occasions, I could be mid-lecture, and the whole class will erupt in laughter upon hearing her laugh in the next room. <laughs> and I'm sure many of us can attest to that. Unfortunately, on several of those occasions, the laughter from her class was likely because she was yet again making fun of me and my short stature, which is something Rosemary loved to do. And in addition to her humor, we can tell she has a very distinct laugh. But what probably many of you don't know is that Rosemary's quite the singer. And having shared an office wall with her for several years, I have been the recipient of several private concerts. <laughs> I have no doubt that as Rosemary enters her time, she will continue to enjoy her passions, which will include being with her daughter Lisa, her son Daniel and, her, and his wife Danielle, her beloved dog Gracie, as well as her many close family and friends which are here today. Many of you also may not know that Rosemary's family owns a cattle farm out in New Mexico. It's a in ranch. Ranch. <laughs> cattle ranch. I actually have ranch written. Um, and she has the boots, the belt buckle, and the hat to prove it. And I have at least seen those. Retirement will give her time to spend not only herding and branding cattle, but also using the farm to monitor land, water, and wildlife. Make improvements to the environment, which is something which they just continue. I think they just finished a five-year grant on, on this recently. The biology department is grateful for Rosemary's dedication to the students and mission of the department. We wish her the very best in her retirement, but I've been told to say maybe she won't be retiring. Maybe oh, we need no, to have no. her in the next couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> and hope that she uses the time to consider to pursue her passion in plants, nature, spending time with family and friends, and of course traveling. Congratulations, Rosemary. <laughs> now it is her turn.
learned a lot of things about myself that I didn't know. <laughs> I have a, a, a few comments. Um, I just want to start with you. Thank you so much for having this reception and the reception every year, but I look at it as a reunion. It's a reunion of friends. Uh, there's been a number of people passing through Washington College since I first came, and it's nice to have that reunion of people who have been there in the past and people who are there now. And I really like that opportunity, and I think it's a great thing. And I'm also excited about this new campaign that's coming about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's pretty exciting. And it can ensure the success of the college. I remember my first year here, the faculty meetings at night, starting at 7.30, going on till 10.30, often would be centered around what to do in times of financial exigency. It was right on the topic all the time, and they debated and they debated. Being a green new faculty member, I knew I was on the chopping block. You know, but it's uh, good to know that we're on a solid foundation and that maybe we don't have, those, have to have those talks anymore, but it certainly shaped my first years at the college wondering if, about the solid foundation. Now, Patrice is not here, but I want to thank you for reading those remarks. And um, I have enjoyed uh, knowing Patrice, and, and I have found that Patrice can do all things. So she's yeah. in one office one day, and then she's in the next office across the hallway. <laughs> Find up, and she seems to embody that concept of redouble your efforts. Do you remember how we used to hear that all the time? <laughs> redouble your efforts. And she was one that uh, I can see that even though we don't hear it all the time anymore, but she is one that really can do that. Now, yeah, Mindy, you probably said, where are you? You probably said more than you needed to say. <laughs> But I watch you grow as a faculty member, as a young neophyte, just out of graduate school per se, or postdoc, I don't know. She was new in the, <laughs> occupying this space next to me. And you have grown to be a co-chair and quite an effective co-chair. And she and Martin together do a great job uh, coming along. She doesn't know, but I hear all of her phone conversations. <laughs> that wall, she always wants to do speaker conversations. And she's looking at, uh, this is not in my notes, by the way. <laughs> and she, she's always looking at my wall, talking to the speaker. So we have a lot of that. Uh, and she and Martin have a big job ahead of them because there's some brand new people in the department. Well, we have two, then what, is this your fourth year or so? And then two more coming in. So we'll be a new department. There's just two old, well, several old ones left in there, let's just say. When I took over, when I came there, I was the new Ed Gwynn. Do you remember Ed Gwynn? Okay. So I can't say that he was well beloved. but. He taught the same classes that I, I had, and even Martin ran into Ed Gwynn up in Maine. Yeah, so. Um, but I, he, when I walked into my office, it was clean. There wasn't a single thing in it. So I had to start from scratch, and I'm not doing that with Jen Wanat, who is my replacement. I've already given her books and lab books, and I'll give her all my resources, because I really want her to have a, a good start when she comes here. I met with her two hours last week. My botany books, I'm, since we have nobody teaching botany, um, <laughs> but they'll go to the National Arboretum, and they uh, uh, are looking forward to, to getting those. And um, of course, my home has been in the biology department, and, and we've grown quite a bit since I've been there. When I came, there was three, and I think we're eight and a half now. How many are we? Eight and a half. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? And not only that, we have a lot of support. So when we began, it was just us, the faculty member Don and Kate and I, and we did everything. And now we have um, a coordinator for general biology labs. That's a big thing. Help with living resources. Now she's here today. Gail, where are you? Now Gail. So. <laughs> They said this needed to be formal, but you know, Gail. Um, she'll put out this email that said, if you need your animals, get them now. And I said, 
our plants in that living resources so we've had this battle about what's living and what's not living you know and she's done real good in the greenhouse I think she's learned the difference between dirt and soil but it's been a tough thing she's moving right along and um, then we also have uh, lab prep and help with lab prep and ordering. And Barbara Cregan, I think you were the first one in that position, were you not? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so we're on our third rendition of that or so right now. And Carrie, is she here? Yeah, so that's been very helpful. So you can imagine the three when we just started to all the help we have right now. Even the building grew. So first we started in the old Dunning, very antiquated building. And then we had the Decker edition. Uh, quite um, a modern facility and made a big impact on our students and then we uh, moved into the Toll Laboratory which is really good really really good for the students and good for us too I think when you start a new career maybe not maybe just in life but as you start out from that could have been me at graduating from high school but still when you start something new um, I think you're hunting for treasures and, and I think my life at Washington College was a treasure hunt, you know, because you have to find out what's really valuable and good and you keep it. Things that are bad, you just let them go, okay? And the good thing about that is you define what your treasures are. Now before I came to Washington College, I found out one of those treasures and that's Kate Fervell and where's Kate? There she is, okay? <laughs> Now she actually told me about this position even before I applied and I, I was so grateful for that. And um, we had met each other at the University of Delaware because we both taught there at that time. And uh, she has been a great friend and a colleague during these few years and she, I'm going to miss her terribly. She's really a vital member of the department and we actually compliment her, compliment each other. I call her Queen of the Autoclave. <laughs> Now, the autoclave. Now, the autoclave is a, is just how we. Uh, she calls them kill loads. Got to do a kill load, and it's high temperature and pressure. When she came, we had these big pots, and she then modernized us to this uh, market forge autoclave. We still have that baby, and it is still working. And not only that. It has a companion. <laughs> now we have gone modern. What now? A third one? Oh my God. <laughs> now we have the electronic one, but as electronic things, you never know whether they're going to work for the next minute to the next. But this, this market forward, let me tell you, it's going. And she's been here longer than I have. So. And I, uh, I help her. So she's queen of the autoclave. She can always fix that thing. Um, I help her send messages in Canvas, which sometimes boggles her, and teach her to turn on the on switch on small equipment. <laughs> and that's before I came to Washington College. Now there's another thing I found out about Washington College that I really liked, and that it's a family friendly place. On the day of my interview, my son Daniel decided to be born that day, and so we um, just did it for a week later. <laughs> Very difficult to have the interview with a week old baby, but it happened. And uh, so I know how long I've been at Washington College because I know how old Daniel is. <laughs> now we're both graduating, me from Washington College and him from University of Maryland on Monday. So I'm really proud of him. So it's taken us 31 years, both of us, to reach our goals. His wife, Danielle, I don't know where they found that name, but they, they were sweethearts at Washington College. She was on the fast track. She graduated last year, so, but she was unable to be here. And of course, Lisa's here as well. And uh, she, she was a few years older than Danielle. I won't tell how old you are. Um, but both of them benefited from the tuition exchange program, and, and I really appreciate that because uh, Lisa went to Delaware and Daniel went to Washington College. Now we call about damn the debt. Well, we had that when they went because they had no debt and that was my gift to them that they would never have any college loans and that was due to Washington College. <clears throat> now it would be uh, uh, impossible to mention everybody who I have valued and, <coughs> and 
put into my little treasure box. But um, I will mention Alonzo and Virginia Decker. They were sweet, wonderful people. Now, you might not know that Decker is one of the owners of Black & Decker, or was. Um, and, uh, and Virginia, his wife, very sweet, wonderful people, but who really cared about the college and, and, and gave of themselves and gave of their money. And, and I, w I feel privileged to know them. And then when I'm cluttering out, I'm, I'm decluttering my desk, quite a challenge, I found a gold coin. God bless you all real good. Okay. And every time I think about it, it brings a smile to my face. So that's still in my treasure chest. Now on campus we have two trees, one to Louis and one to his wife. And the one to the wife is doing a little bit better than the one to him, but still, <laughs> uh, the generations in their future will uh, uh, get, look at the trees and know who they are. And, and, and Winslow Long, by the way, Winston, not Winston, <laughs> I know Barry Lynn had it wrong. <laughs> He was a little man, a uh, community, who really cared about the campus, and he was the one that gave me the, uh, um, instilled in me the inspiration to form the Arboretum, and he was really, uh, he really loved it. Now, unexpected, the person I'll mention here is Terry Scout. Now, Terry Scout, I heard from him and he congratulated me on my retirement, but he was the one that asked me to take the uh, advisor role for Best Buddies. And I am so grateful that he did that because it has been such value getting to know the clients, or the, the in adults in the community with learning uh, intellectual differences. But not only that, it's the students because they care so much about them. Now, uh, the list of faculty and students, uh, current and past, would be too many to mention. But I, I will mention that uh, the department asked for our remembrances and they have put together this little book. And uh, so a lot of students have wrote in, and they included it in there. That was, they gave that to me in a surprise party, and I, I, all of those are a treasure. They started coming in to me at spring break. I'm not quite sure when they went out, but uh, <coughs> I've got those, and I'm still getting letters as well. And so uh, faculty and staff have signed this, and it's been really great. And then I got a, uh, a, a photograph also signed by the department. So there's so, just so much fondness I have for the, the students and the faculty. I know genetics was hard. So I know we didn't hear from a lot of people. <laughs> but I always challenged them and expected them to be, do their best work. And I suffered fools lightly. So, uh, a pro, uh, so I have given myself a gift. I will never, ever in my life read rate my professors. <laughs> <laughs> and there's so much more than people and students that are my treasures from Washington College. I just love the old trees on campus. The elms, and I, I mourn when we lose them. They get Dutch elm disease. And the lindens in front of the hill dorms, those are just beautiful trees. I'm sad when the, I don't know what it's called, it's a thing that uh, digs into the dirt to put the cables in. They ignore the feet of my beautiful trees. So we have lost a few of them because of that. But as I'm walking on campus, I enjoy seeing the knees of the ball cypress. These are part, uh, parts of the roots coming up that the lawnmowers keep mowed down. But every time I look at them, I say, there's one of those those ball cypress knees. So there's so many things about Washington College that I am putting into my treasure chest and it's just a full chest and I appreci appreciate all, all of you. People ask, what am I gonna do when I graduate? I'm gonna, I'm gonna list three. One is to-do lists. For some reason, people who are retired think that, well, my family thinks that these to-do lists they can give me and I'm going to be doing them. <laughs> my sister even, I mean even far removed, my sister has a big one for me and that's about the ranch. And I have used my background in biology for the ranch um, a lot with endangered species. Um, my sister wants me to catalog all the grasses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and then the plants of the jungle. 
down in McKinney, and that's from Jenny. Is here Jenny Carr? Yeah. Um, a student was not able to go, and so they said, can you go? I said, sure. So that was Jenny and Robin. We went down there, and we're preparing materials for school children and uh, at people who come to the McKinney. I'd never seen a poem before, so I had a lot to learn, and it's just fun doing it. And they enjoyed me falling into the spiny palms and into the mud. Not so much the, the um, why don't I want to say this? Well, uh, there was a lot of sickness when I was there. <laughs> but you know, those things can be forgotten. So, uh, and I was inspired to learn Spanish, George. Now George says, George Shivers, I, I was a dropout of his Spanish class. He never took genetics. <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> My third project is I have been researching the people who settled the ranch. Now in the West, uh, about Civil War time, 1860s, uh, 1880s, there were big cattle drives coming in from Texas because the fences were coming in. So some of those people came to our ranch and homesteaded. So I've been reading these people about these people and just devouring magazines, looking at uh, archives. And I attribute that to my friends over here, Judy Himes and Jeanette Sherbondi. Both of those are advocates of that. And these people who have settled the ranch, I just consider, consider all my friends because I have read their stories. The stories in the newspapers were like Facebook today. You really get to know them. So um, I want to write about that. Uh, because I think they have great stories to tell, and it was such a hard life. Um, Jim Lewis, one of my favorite uh, settlers, uh, he had a hard life. He lost three of his children to the uh, childhood epidemics, and uh, was really a, a great man. So um, those are just three of the projects that I have um, uh, coming about. I guess the to-do list come first. My daughter has one for me. But I'm coming to the end of my 31 years, and it's been a great journey. You know, I'm so impressed with the growth of the college and the deep friendships. And the acquaintances of the students and the impact on their life. And no doubt life will be different in August. No syllabi, not coming back, but no teaching evaluations. There's another thing that I never have to do again, and that is revise the freshman writing component. <laughs> I think it's on a 10-year cycle, so brace yourselves. It's coming again. <laughs> so I'm not really leaving. I'm just um, be here in uh, Chestertown sometime. I'll be on the ranch sometimes. The ranch is fun in the fall, and I can hardly wait to be there. But it's been a great journey, and I thank you all so much. Thank you, Rosemary. That was fabulous. Uh, and now to Kathy. Um, a poem is a strange and powerful thing, drawing from the ordinary and familiar to help us see anew. Throughout her teaching career at Washington College, poet Kathy Wagner, class of 1979, has demonstrated her great gift for this kind of alchemy, spinning language into memory and human connection. So it seems fitting, as her final chapter here at Washington College ends, that we remember her presence here over the last three decades has changed us all as well. Kathy was there at the inception of the Rose O'Neill Literary House, collaborating with college president Douglas Cater and English professor Robert Day to establish a literary home for the college's young writers. She was there when the Lit House was dedicated uh, when the Heidelberg pr letter presses were installed in the new press room, when the literary press came into being, and when three of the writers uh, she helped to bring to campus, and these are real luminaries, Toni Morrison, Joseph Brodsky, and Derek Walcott, became Nobel laureates. She wrote and administered a number of grants for the National Endowment for the Arts and the Maryland State Arts Council, to bring writers of national stature to Chestertown. 
our reputation as the writing college grew in large part from her contributions over the course of 23 years as associate director of the Lit House. And as always and forever, she has been there for her students as an attentive and nurturing advisor. In addition to poems, articles published in Plum Review, Sequoia, Panhandler, Southern Poetry Review, and other publications, Kathy also compiled a book of quotations from the works of William Shakespeare, published by HarperCollins, um, and it's entitled Speak the Speech, the Shakespeare Quotation Book. Kathy received her bachelor's degree, obviously, here at Washington College in English and an MFA in poetry from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, in addition to her role as associate director of the Rose O'Neill Literary House from its founding in 85 until 2006, she chaired the Campus Events and Visitors Committee, the Academic Resources Committee, and the Humanities Division. You probably don't even remember you did all those things. <laughs> she also was a director of the Gender Studies Program for six years and served as editor of the Washington College Review for a number of years. In this, the 50th anniversary of the Sophie Kerr legacy, we are pleased to acknowledge the role that you've played uh, in creating and nurturing an extraordinary literary culture here. And hereby I present her with the rank of Assistant Professor of English Emerita. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite up Robert Moody, who has some interesting words of appreciation. So thank you. I like the way that you assume they'd be interesting, thank you. <laughs> but, but how could they not be when you're talking about Kathy Wagner? Um, I came to Washington College 20 years ago. I had been uh, director of the program at Binghamton University for 10 years. And uh, I was hired to, to be the director of the, the Rose O'Neill Literary House at this place called Washington College. Didn't know much about it. Um, and I have this, this memory of coming down to Washington College and walking up to the Rose O'Neill Literary House and there was Kathy at the door saying, welcome. Come on in, let me show you around. That's not how it happened. I write fiction and, <laughs> and it's wired my brain in such a way where, where memory uh, uh, goes in that direction, which means to me that uh, uh, is a fiction writer and it memor remembering things such as this, uh, uh, it, it, it's not true actually, but it's got a truth that's more profound than the actual truth. Because in, in, in essence, Kathy did meet me at the literary house. She was, in that memory, the first person that I really met and got to know here at Washington College. I was, I was walking up to the deck of, of, of this beautiful house and wondering how I could be director of this place. And it was Kathy who was there as associate director that literally showed me around the house and showed me what the house was capable of, what it had accomplished, uh, what we might accomplish together as we go into the future. I served as director for eight years uh, working with Kathy at the literary house. And I can't imagine anyone in, in the 20 years that uh, I've been here at Washington College uh, who, who would have been a, a more effective, uh, warm, uh, generous, uh, imaginative partner in that often very difficult endeavor. Um, at the time, uh, the, the literary house was really the only center, and we didn't even call it a center, but it was certainly a center of excellence for Washington College. It was the beacon out there that probably shone brightest in, in, in the furthest direction uh, about our dedication to the literary arts. Um, there, there was a, a very healthy program, busy program, not only the Sophie Kerr Award, which we're going to be conferring again this weekend, uh, but, but all of the, the, the readings <coughs> that we've talked about, uh, student workshops, um, the letterpress, uh, all of these activities and, and growing, the, the, the writer's theater, uh, 
the Writers' Union, which Kathy uh, for, for many years served as, as the academic advisor for, I think at its peak had almost 130 members, students and faculty. It was Kathy who brought them all together, Kathy who, who organized uh, our initial meeting to plan out the year, to get people excited about the program and what it could do, uh, to get students to initiate uh, through their own imaginations what it is that they wanted to do, how to best help them grow. Um, it was it, it was nerve wracking. It was busy because it, it, the lit house at the time uh, again my fictional memory makes metaphor uh, was kind of a, a, a ship on very turbulent seas, cross currents. It was exciting. There was a lot of energy. There was a lot of people on board, uh, but it was really just Kathy and me in that house. And we were, we were both mandated and energized and um, desirous of making the most lively, meaningful program in, in the co-curricular sense that we could for our students. That it wasn't just a lounge where people who had vaguely the same interest uh, could hang out, but how could we help direct uh, whatever growing ambition and dream that they might have in these arts. Um, Kathy had a sense of history that I really needed when I came here. Um, not only the history as we know how rich it is here uh, at the college going back to, to George Washington, but the rich history of the people who had been to the Literary House, the liberal arts uh, mission and its devotion to the literary arts. Uh, she introduced me, I'm pretty sure, to a lot of people in this, under this tent today. Uh, I was thinking of that earlier when I came in. I said, I, I'm, I'm sure I know uh, so many of you through her. Uh, and it was that, that grace of, uh, y y you know, being uh, an extraordinary teacher, uh, administrator, and a host um, that helped to make the literary house a home. I could not have done that alone. I don't think I could have done a lot of the things that Kathy did do, what she brought to that project. And I know it's meant so much to so many of our students still hear from them. Uh, and it was very visible um, at, at, at a particularly difficult time uh, in, in the college's history as far as uh, finances were concerned. Um, we, we, we were doing what we could uh, as much in the economy of our energy as, as what uh, we had as far as, as monetary help was concerned. And we, we brought in Nobel laureates, as, as you heard, uh, National Book Award winners, Pulitzer Prize winners, hanging out in this house and feeling at home in this house. And uh, having Kathy in the room in that conversation simply uh, enhanced those experiences for, for our students, certainly for me, and I, I know for a lot of the writers that we brought in as well. Uh, Kathy, as we know, is an alumna of the college, and um, we haven't talked about this, but in my getting to know her so well over the years, I know that um, her experience with the liberal arts education that she received here uh, played a huge role, I think, in, in her coming back some years later after receiving her Master's of Fine Arts degree. And I, I'm pretty sure that, that she came back to Washington College in the same way that, that people who read great poems and great novels want to become writers. It, it changes them in some way, and they say, I want to do that. And I, I think that's what happened with Kathy. I think her experience here, the education that she received here, and the character that she has had her say, I want to do that. I want to I want to go to this place and be there like that for others and she spent 34 years doing that doing that extraordinarily well um, I asked um, our, our colleague uh, Rich Gillen who was chair for for those years that Kathy and I were together at the literary house uh, if he if he'd contribute uh, some words uh, rich rich and uh, was 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 a, a, an extraordinary part of of those years at the literary house as well with his support. Uh, Rich, who is here, is, is said as an undergraduate, Kathy was deeply involved in the literary life of the campus. She organized various events where students' work was presented. She was a strong force in Richmond House, the precursor to the literary house. 
When I was chairman, I knew I could rely on Kathy to fill in courses as they became needed. She was always flexible in her schedule and willingness to serve the department and the greater good. As a colleague, she has always been on top of what was going on in the college as a whole, and she has served her advisees especially well. She kept the gender studies program moving and ensured its establishment as a regular part of the curriculum. Her sense of social cohesion has motivated her to make the face of the English department a warm and welcoming one. And I think that that certainly uh, also was, was true at, at, at the literary house. Um, as, as colleague, I think um, I speak for all of us when I say that when you have Kathy Wagner as a friend, you've got a very good friend. Um, she's somebody that, uh, well, first of all, for me, she's somebody that I, I when I see her on campus, uh, I don't avoid her. <laughs> that tells me a lot about Kathy, just personally in, in dialogue with myself. Um, in fact, I, I, I've continued after our time at the Literary House to seek uh, uh, her for, for, for interesting conversation, for ideas, for news, uh, just to see how she's doing. And, and I know that uh, Kathy's plans have her staying in Chestertown. Uh, good, good for us because uh, she's been a part of the Washington College community for um, most of your life, Kathy and will remain so, and, and, and lucky us that, that she'll be around to, uh, uh, to converse with, to um, ask advice, uh, to, uh, to talk literature, to say poems, and um, the, the, the privilege of all of us to, to be able to say hello at those times, but for now, congratulations. As you can see, I have no prepared remarks. <laughs> um, I just have a ton of thank yous. Um, I'd like to, first of all, thank all of my colleagues, past and present, um, in the English department for 34 years of an extraordinary ride. Um, I'd like to thank Sheila for hosting this event and for Andrea for reading the citation. And I'd also like to thank uh, Gina Ralston, who, where are you, Gina? Yeah, thank you. You put all, you were putting all these events together this week, and this is just one of many, but thank you for that. And I'd also like to thank Marsha Landskroner. I don't know if you all know that she writes almost everything that's read from all of these podiums all year long. She's here, too. Where are you, Marsha? Right here. Okay, thank you, thank you. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, I also just, I'd like, not just, but I'd like to thank all my friends who, and family who came here, and a special thank you to my brother, John Wagner, who's been um, very instrumental in keeping me going. Um, I'd like to think that I've helped him uh, to keep going at the boathouse. Uh, he's done extraordinary things for the waterfront at, at the college. I'm sure most of you know that, but I think we've been a good team. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge my uh, sister-in-law, Carol Wagner, who's an alum of the college. Nicole Wagner, <laughs> who's also an alum of the college, and Isabel, who may or may not be <laughs> a future student at Washington College, yet to be determined. As most of you know, um, I come from a legacy family. My father went to Washington College. My other niece, who lives in Vancouver, um, whose son I'm going to, uh, whose uh, high school graduation I'll be attending in a couple weeks, weeks also attended Washington College. So my history is not, my, is not only my own, but my family's history. Um, so I just want to thank everybody who's here. All of you are my friends, um, every single one of you. And uh, it's been a great ride. Um, I can't imagine a life um, any better than the one that I've had here um, at Washington College and that I'll continue to have here in Chestertown, whether I'm here or traveling the world. Thank you. So, so anyway, Rosemary, Kathy, we are going to miss you. I'm glad you're going to be staying connected with us. Where's the cattle ranch? New Mexico. Oh, my God. Well, so we will not be seeing you there. <laughs> but anyway, thanks, everyone, for coming. There's still plenty of food and drink if you'd like to linger a bit longer. And uh, have a great evening. Thanks. <laughs>